Hi everybody, welcome to day 10, the last video of chapter 9. We are looking at section 9-6, solving rational equations. Alright, so we've simplified rational expressions, we've done all that, now it's time to solve these equations. Alright, so there's essentially two types that we are going to be exposed to. The first type is proportions, and these are probably ones that you're most familiar with. All right, so if you take a look at the first two examples here, those are proportions where one ratio equals another ratio. So the steps to solve these proportions is to cross multiply. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our first example here. So we've got 3 over x plus 2, so there's one ratio, one fraction, equals 6 over x minus 1, another fraction. So when we have a ratio equaling a ratio, this is a proportion. So we can cross multiply. So 3 times x minus 1 is equal to 6 times x plus 2. Okay, so here we go. 3 times x minus 1, those guys go together, is equal to 6 times x plus 2. Cross multiplying only works when it's an equation, okay? And now we just go ahead and we clean up each side and we solve from here. So distributing the 3, we've got 3x minus 3. Distributing that 6, we get 6x minus plus 12. Now just cleaning everything up, gathering our like terms, bringing the 3x over to the other side, and the 12 to the left, we should get negative 15 equals 3x, and dividing by 3, we should get x to be negative 5. Okay, now if you take a look at this note at the bottom of this section, I say don't forget to check for extraneous solutions. Okay, now what would be considered an extraneous solution? Well, a value of x that would make this undefined. So what we're looking for is any value of x that makes our denominator zero, any of our denominators. So if x equals negative five, does negative five plus two equal zero? Nope, so so far negative five works. Does negative 5 minus 1 equal 0? No. So, x equals negative 5 is a perfectly good solution to our equation. Okay? All right. I want you guys to try example 2 on your own. Okay? Now, here's a little hint. When you multiply this out, when you cross multiply, you're going to have to FOIL. You're going to have to solve a quadratic equation. All right, so go ahead and solve this uh, rational equation. See what you get. All right, hopefully uh, if you did everything correctly, you ended up with actually two solutions. Those two solutions being x equals 0 or x equals negative one. If you did not get those, or you have questions on how I got those, um, make sure you bring those questions to the table tomorrow, okay? All right, so that's type one. Type two, the other type of rational equation, is we're going to need to find common, or figure out what the common denominator is, okay? The LCD. Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply every term by this LCD to essentially eliminate the denominators, okay? And what we'll have left is a much nicer equation with no more fractions, okay? So the goal is to eliminate the denominators, all right? So let's kind of go through this step by step, okay? So our third example here, we've got 2 over x plus 3 plus 3 over 2 equals 19 over 10. 
the first thing we're going to do is look at our denominators, figure out the LCD. So we go through factor by factor. Okay, I've got an x plus 3 in my first denominator, so I have to write that. Now if we take a look, the other two denominators are just numbers, 2 and 10. All right, what's the first number that those two numbers both go into? And you should recognize that it is 10. So the LCD is 10 times x plus 3. Okay, so now our next step is step two. We are going to multiply every term by our LCD. So it's going to look something like this. All right, first thing I'm going to do is kind of rewrite my, oh, not a three. That's a two. So we have two over x plus three. I'm going to leave some space. Plus three over two leave some space, equals 19 over 10. We're going to go through and multiply every term by our LCD. So time, 10 times x plus 3, 10 times x plus 3, and 10 times x plus 3. Okay? All right, so doing this, hopefully, we will eliminate our denominators. So if we take a look at our first term here, okay, the x plus 3's will cancel and we will be left with 2 times 10 plus. All right, if we look over here, the 10 and the 2 simplify. That's going to be a 5. So we are going to have 3 times 5 times x plus 3 equals, if we take a look at this third term, the tens cancel nicely, so we are going to be left with 19 times x plus 3. Okay, so notice the denominators are gone, so now we just clean everything up. So 2 times 10 is 20, plus 3 times 5 is 15, and distributing the 15 and write it away, we're going to have 15x plus 45, okay, is equal to 19x plus 57, all right? This is a much nicer equation. Let's just continue cleaning each side up. So it's 15x plus 65 is equal to 19x plus 57. And now gathering our like terms, we will have 8 is equal to 4x, so we should get x to be 2. The last thing I want to do is check. Does 2 make any of our denominators 0? Well, 2 plus 3 is not 0, so that's okay. There's no x to plug in for in the other two denominators, so this x equals 2 is perfectly good for us. Okay, so let's go to the next page and try some more examples. All right, so this next one, we've got two over z plus one minus one over z minus one equals negative two over z squared minus one. The first thing we will need to do is make sure every factor, or sorry, every denominator is factored. So we should look at this z squared minus one we can factor that. So I'm going to rewrite this equation and I'm also going to leave room for when we multiply. So we have 2 over z plus 1, leave some space, minus 1 over, and that's fully factored, so I'll put uh, parentheses around it, over uh, z minus 1 is equal to, leaving some space, negative 2, and we've got a difference of squares there z plus 1 and z minus 1. Okay, so now when we're going through figuring out the common denominator, I list all of the factors of our first denominator, and that's going to be z plus 1. And then I jump to my next denominator, I write down any new factor, and that is going to be a z minus 1, that is new. And then finally, we go to our next denominator, z plus 1. We've already got one accounted for, so we don't need to write it again. 
z minus 1, already got one of those, so our LCD is z plus 1 times z minus 1. Now we go through and we multiply every term by that. So 2 times z plus 1 times z minus 1, 1 times z plus 1 times z minus 1, and negative 2 times z plus 1 times z minus 1. Okay, and now we just go through and we cancel anything that we can. So this first term, we're going to be left with 2 times z minus 1. In the second term, the z minus 1's cancel, so we are going to be left with negative 1 times z plus 1. And then finally in this last term, the z plus 1's cancel and the z minus 1's cancel, leaving us just with equals negative 2. And now let's clean it up. So we'll distribute. So we're going to get 2z minus 2. Distributing the negative 1, we get negative z minus 1 equals negative 2. So gathering up the like terms on the left, 2z minus z will just leave us with z minus 3 equals negative 2. Adding 3 to the uh, right side, or both sides, we get z is equal to 1. Okay. Now the last thing we have to do is check. If z equals 1, does it make any of our denominators 0? And what you should notice is when we plug z equals 1 into our second or our third denominator, it equals 1. Okay. Therefore, this is extraneous. Okay. It makes the denominator equal 0. Therefore, our solution is no solution. And you need to make sure you state that. You can't just cross off z equals negative 1. Okay? So there's a case where you do have an extraneous solution. All right? Okay, let's go ahead and try example 5 now. Okay? So we have 2 over 3x plus 2 over 3 equals 8 over x plus 6. The first thing we want to make sure is that each denominator is fully factored, and in this case it is, but I'm going to rewrite each term just so I leave space when I have to multiply through. So we have 2 over 3x, leave space, plus 2 over 3, leave space, equals 8 over x plus 6. Now we're going to go through and state our LCD. So looking at the first denominator, I write down each factor. So we have a 3, we have an x. Move on to my next denominator, 3. We already have a 3 accounted for, so we don't need to write that one again. Moving on to the next one, x plus 6. We do not have an x plus 6, so we need to add an x plus 6 to the LCD. So our LCD is 3x times x plus 6. Now we go through, multiply every term by that LCD. So 2 times 3x times x plus 6. 2 times 3x times x plus 6. 8 times 3x times x plus 6. And now we go through and we simplify. So here, the 3's cancel, the x's also cancel leaving us with 2 times x plus 6, all right? In the second term, the 3's cancel, leaving us with a plus 2x times x plus 6. In the third term, the x plus 6's cancel, leaving us with 8 times 3x, okay? So now let's go ahead and clean things up. So distributing the 2, we get 2x plus 12. Distributing the 2x, we get a plus 2x squared plus 12x equals 8 times 3x is 24x. Okay, so now we're going to gather our like terms on the left side. 
and just clean things up. So we're going to have a 2x squared plus 14x plus 12 is equal to 24x. All right, we've got ourselves a quadratic, so we need everything over on one side. So let's subtract that 24x. When we do that, we've got 2x squared plus, or sorry, no, minus, it's going to be a minus 10x uh, plus 12 is equal to 0. All right, so let's try factoring it. What you should notice is every term has a 2 in common. So if we divide everything out by 2, we'll be left with x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Okay, how does this factor? Product of 6, sum of negative 5, we should get x minus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0, leaving us with two answers of x equals 3 and x equals 2. The last thing we need to verify is do we have any extraneous solutions? If we plug 3 into any of our denominators, do they equal 0? Nope. So 3 works. If we plug 2 in, do we get a 0 in either one of our denominators? No, we don't. So both of these answers work. Okay? All right. So lastly, you guys are now going to try example 6 on your own. Okay? Factor all of the denominators. Figure out your LCD. Go through. Solve the equation. And then always, always, always... Don't forget to check your answers for extraneous solutions. Okay, so give it a try, and uh, in just a second, I'll tell you what the answer is. Okay? All right, so after you tried this, you should have gotten two answers. You should have gotten x equals negative 7, and you should have gotten x equals 3. However, hopefully you verified, x cannot equal 3 because it would make this first denominator 0 as well as this third denominator 0. So really the only answer you should have gotten is x equals negative 7. If you didn't get that, uh, make sure you ask about it tomorrow. Otherwise, have a great night. Bye guys.